Thanks, CCW. That that was weak. How about we change it up to Aloha CCW? Aloha. All right. Nice, nice. I just want to welcome you to Church on the Lawn, Lua on the Lawn today, and we are going to have a great time, and I'm going to preach short. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Just warming everybody up. All right. Um, I just want to announce Senior Send-Off is coming up this weekend, and uh, we're going to be out by the bonfire at 9 o'clock, so if you want to show up for that and support our youth ministry, that'd be great. Julie, where is Julie? Over here. All right. Let's hear for Julie. Yeah. Julie's worked so hard, and uh, she came in as our staff member and had two Sundays, and then we're like, you can't do what we ask you to do anymore. And so she's done a great job figuring things out, and we've done Neighborhood Bible School this week, but she has some really cool announcements. I'm going to turn it over to her, and we are going to rock and roll through our service. Good sermon, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> have a <short>, brother. <laughs> All right, I have so many exciting things to tell you, I really don't even know where to start. Many of you saw a sneak peek of some of the changes that were starting to happen right behind me. Well, we have phase one complete. We have done a makeover of the main room, the two-year-old room, the kindergarten and first grade room, and the fourth and fifth grade room. And I am truly excited for all of you to see it. But before we go on, um, we had so many people that came in and helped and gave up their weekends, their weeknights, some of their days. So if you helped in any capacity downstairs, um, brought meals, whatever, please stand so we can give you a little round of applause. Now, good news, don't worry. If you missed helping with phase one, we still have three more phases to the CCW Kids Makeover that you all can be a part of. So today after service, I'm inviting you all to stop in and check out the new CCW Kids. We have changed the name and we've made it super bright. While we have made changes to the walls, there are many things that have not changed. I cannot do this alone. I am really encouraging you to serve our CCW Kids. When I look at my kids and all the kids down there, I want so much for them not only to have a relationship with Christ, but to be surrounded by other Christ followers. When you serve and invest in our children, you are not only there just to be a warm body, you are being the hands and feet of Jesus. By nurturing them, feeding them, and bringing closer in their relationship to Christ. As a parent of two kids down there, it makes me feel so good to know that they are surrounded by believers. Because as parents, Justin and I know that we cannot do it alone. And I promise you that serving in this ministry will be both life-changing and life-giving. There truly is nothing better than watching our two-year-olds worship or having a heartfelt conversation with one of our fourth and fifth graders. And it's okay if you don't know all the answers. If you're a Jesus follower and you believe these children are the future of our church, then you are qualified. Now, as the children's director, I also want to serve the volunteers down there. So starting with an area where if you're running late, maybe forgot your coffee, maybe your kids couldn't find your shoes like mine this morning, maybe you forgot your breakfast altogether, I've got you covered. We're going to have our own little station down there, hidden from the children, but just for you. Now I've saved the best for last. We are reopening CCW Kids on August 2nd. Yeah. This is going to look a little bit different than usual, and I'll be sending out an email later this week with all of our details, but I truly look forward to serving our families, our kids, and each one of our volunteers in person rather than on the computer screen. All right, if you would all stand and worship with us. Oh, 
Savior and King above all, and you and your love are unstoppable. Nothing is impossible for you. You defeated death and sin so we could be a part of your kingdom forever. And your strength becomes ours when we trust in you. We love you and thank you and praise you today, God. Amen. All right, you guys can have a seat. All right. You enjoy that? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> that was under cool. Thank you, man. All right. I'm going to see how far I can go without squealing. I'm going to talk at you, Steve. There we go. All right. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm going to pause and pray real quick, but uh, I just want to give a shout out to God because early this morning, if you looked at the radar, there was going to be rain here at 10 o'clock. And it was going to pop up, and, and I just, Lisa and I talked, and I'm like, God, whatever you got to do, just dispatch your angels, whatever. Just, just change the weather long enough so that we can go ahead and have church outside. And um, Neil just showed me some radar, and it's supposed to rain here at 1240. Uh -huh. So thank you, God. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm going to pause and pray, and then I'm going to have our, our grade school kids help me preach today. God, thank you so much for how you love us and care for us. Thank you that you are in charge. You are sovereign, and you are powerful, and, and you can control the weather. And we simply ask this morning that you would bless us and show us your favor, and now we recognize that you did. And so we're grateful that we can be outside. We're thankful all of the work there is a ton of work that's gone into this with setting up tents and getting the downstairs ready and and trish and the band and all of the equipment that has to be moved i thank you for every single person that had a piece of this i pray that you bless them but right now father as we pause we're going to look into your word and i pray that you use it you encourage us you inspire us we are motivated by you and so i pray that your spirit is free to roam among us today in your name I pray. Amen. <clears throat> well, if you're our first time checking out CCW or you're checking in at home, we want to welcome you. And um, we just want you to relax. And we don't really care where you've been. We care where you're headed. We care where you're, how you're doing right now. 
And so we're in the middle of this thing uh, of a virus, and so Vacation Bible School was slated to be here this past week, and we were gearing up for all of that, and then COVID hit, and so then we said, well, we can't do it, and then Julie kept like researching and figuring things out, and so we did like a backyard or neighborhood Vacation Bible School. And so today, Iowa thought that I am going to just if it's good for the children, it's gonna be good for the adults. So I'm gonna go through the five days of Vacation Bible School in review, but grade school kids, if you're in elementary school, I know your parents always tell you to be quiet in church, but if you're a grade school kid, I just wanna hear a big old yell from you. Okay, grade school kid, let me hear you. <laughs> Nothing? Oh, All right, I'm gonna try it again. Okay, grade school kids, let me hear you. Okay, adults, help them out. Yeah! All right, all right. So, so you're going to have to help them as we go through this because I was going to have them help me teach this. But um, So our theme for Vacation Bible School is Jesus pulls us through, and it's a railroad theme and all of that. But um, we decided since we're outside, we're going to do a luau on the lawn. And uh, Trish wanted to do the limbo, and I'm like, no, because then I'll show everybody up with all my muscular abilities and can't do that. But um, Jesus pulls us through is our theme. And... Um, and so we had our five days, and our, our main text from day one comes from Philippians, and Jesus' power helps us do hard things. That was day number one. Jesus' power helps us do hard things. And, and I don't know about you, but I kind of find this virus thing a little bit difficult, a little, a little challenging. And I don't really like that I can't, you know, hug people and stuff like that. And, and um, I don't really want people getting sick or dying. I mean, the, the whole thing is challenging to me. However... It's a reminder to me that Jesus can help us. Amen. And Jesus can get us through whatever it is, no matter how we're feeling or what's going on, that, that he can help us. And, and something I, I really like in this text of Philippians chapter 4 is you see people helping people. And as the pastor of CCW, th that's one of the things that I enjoy watching th this, this church function, is people will help people. And whether it's faith in action or, or Linda doing something with our, our women's ministry or Mike Shear running our, our fight club, but all it takes is somebody to say, hey, I got this need or I got this thing going on. And I even see children helping. And Julie's like, hey, we're going to paint downstairs and, and there's kids helping and doing all kinds of stuff, taking off switch plates. And, and that's how the church should function. If you agree, just say yes. yes. That's how we're supposed to be. We're supposed to take care of each other and help each other and, and take it beyond the church walls. And so I love that. So this first text uh, from Philippians 4, I'm going to give a little bit of the context, and, and then we'll get to the key verse. Jesus' power helps us do hard things. This is Philippians 4, 10 through 13. How I praise the Lord that you are concerned about me again. This is Paul writing this to the church in Philippi. I know you have always been concerned for me, but you didn't have the chance to help me. Not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. And then Paul says this, and this is a verse, man, we quote all the time. But I wanted to get the context of, of whether he's starving or he's full, whether he has needs or he doesn't have needs. And then he says this, For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Would you say that with me? For I can do everything through Christ who gives me that means we can get through COVID that, that means we can figure this out <clears throat> it, it, we can figure out how to share Jesus with people more than six feet apart we, we can figure this out and I believe that the churches that are going to be innovative through this those are the ones that are going to thrive and so as we think about this I don't want to think about how things used to be or the old way it, it's all right so here we are what are we going to do and so Jesus can help us do hard things maybe your hard thing is some kind of financial thing Maybe your hard thing is some kind of relationship thing. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's figuring out what you're going to do with your kids in the fall. But Jesus can help you do hard things. If you agree, just say yes. Yes. Okay, so we can move on then if you agree. Day two, day two is Jesus' power gives us hope. I'm just going to let that go. Jesus' power gives us hope. Say that with me. Jesus' power gives us hope. Okay, so where would we be if we didn't have hope? I mean, think about this. You have to figure out life. You, you have to figure out how to cope with things. You have to figure out when hard times come, what you're going to do. You, you've got to figure this out. Imagine that you go through life without hope. How you cope, how, how you challenge 
life. It, it would be awful. And so the text comes from Psalms on day, day number two. Be strong and courageous, all who put your hope in the Lord. Okay, so why does hope matter? I mean, we talk about this a lot. Why, why does hope in the Lord matter? Let me ask you this question. What on this planet can you control? Yourself. Okay, so Steve says yourself. I, I would say this. You, you, can, you can't control much of anything on this planet, but you can control your reactions to things, but sometimes you can't even control that. Isn't that true? And so hope is one of those things where I need it and I want to lean on God for it. And so Jesus' power gives me hope. Man, I sure need that in my life, and I know you do too. So day three, Jesus' power helps us to be bold. Jesus' power helps us to be bold. Isaiah 40, 29, this is a great verse. He gives power to the weak. Anybody ever feel weak? You know, I'm going to be 55 this year. And I, I just told my wife yesterday... <laughs> You know, I, I've been up and down ladders trying to clean out gutters, you know, doing all this stuff, you know. And I just told my wife yesterday, I said, you know, I'm not jumping out of bed anymore. I'm finding myself rolling out of bed trying to get upright because my body hurts. And, and I'm like, this is crazy. But you know what? I, that's why I love this, that God gives power to weak people. And sometimes I just have to admit I'm weak so he can recognize it and give it to me. And I'm like, okay, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. So he gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. We live in a time that everyone's uptight. I am reading Facebook less and less and less just because people are putting their opinions out there. And I'm like, oh, man, they're just picking a fight. We're, we're living in a day and age where everybody's just uptight and, and picking fights and arguing about stuff. And, and I'm like... <laughs> Man, I, th this is not important. When, when somebody dies, they go somewhere. That's what matters to me, is where people spend eternity and, and their relationship to God. And, and so this is why we need to be bold. We need to talk about Jesus with people. Yes, church? Yes. I mean, this was important. I mean, the whole politics, we're not going to get to heaven, and, and, and God's going to say, so which party did you line up with? <laughs> you know, it, it, that's just not happening. I would rather represent God than represent a party. That's why I'm here. So I will tell you how to vote in November. I will. And I'm going to do this, and, and, and you'll probably forget it by then. So I love doing this. The, the Sunday before election, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you how to vote. And then everybody's like, <gasps> and then I'm going to say this. You pray. You do your research. You go vote for God who tells you to vote for. And then you pray. That's what I'm going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you one way or the other, but I am going to tell you, live for God and do what God wants you to do and speak for God and be bold in that because people are desperately needing hope and Jesus in their life because look at what's happening. Everyone's freaking out and everybody's picking fights. You know what? If we talk about Jesus, it's a very calming thing. So I'm challenging all of us. Let's be bold and talk about Jesus. Why should we do that? Because day number four, the theme was this. Jesus' power lets us live forever. Jesus' power lets us live forever. Romans 8, 11, this is a great verse. The Spirit of God, who raised Jesus from the dead, lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. I'm just going to say something, and you're probably going to say, oh my goodness, pastor. There are days that I forget that Jesus rose from the dead. Oh my goodness, Exactly. Oh my goodness, pastor. Thank you. I was hoping somebody would do that. You know, and it's not that I don't know. It's that it becomes old news. Does that make sense? You know, the, the brand new news, like, oh, I haven't heard that before. Isn't that interesting? And I get excited about that. But we tend to forget that Jesus rose from the dead. And we forget about the power that it took for that to happen. And then we go through life and we start worrying and freaking out about stuff because we forget about Jesus raising from the dead and the power that it took to do that. And God's spirit, when you put your faith in Jesus, God's spirit lives in you. And it's the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead that can help you with whatever you have. Amen, Amen to that church. Amen. You know, God can do anything. Unstoppable God, we sang that. We, we need to raise a hallelujah because Jesus' power is alive in us if you're a Jesus follower. So the truth is, that humans are designed to live forever. And it takes, requires faith in Jesus to make it to heaven. So if you want peace with God, and if you want the Spirit of God to raise Jesus from the dead to be alive in your life, 
I cannot encourage you enough to put your faith in Jesus. And, and I'm a really simple guy. I'm just going to just pause and, and walk through an ABC. You need to admit to God that you're a sinner. You have to admit to me. I don't know anybody here that would say, I'm not a sinner. I have had people say that to me. But you have to admit to God that you're a sinner. Believe that Jesus came and died for you and rose again. That's the wrestling match. And then ask Jesus to save you. Call on Jesus to be your savior. Very, very simple. I don't think God would ask Jesus to come and die for all of the sins of the world and then make it too hard for us to understand, to figure it out. So admit to God that you're a sinner. Believe that Jesus came and died and rose again. And call on Jesus to be your savior. Okay, so we've hit Jesus' power helps us do hard things. We've hit Jesus' power gives us hope. His power helps us be bold. His power lets us live forever. And here's a great one for kids and adults. Jesus' power helps us be good friends. Got a good friend? Yes. Long for a good friend? We need to be good friends. And this is why John 15, 12 says, This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. Now, Jesus is talking here. And an eyewitness named John is the one who wrote this down. I'm going to say it again. Jesus said, this is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. So, children, you should love people. Amen, adults. Children ought to love people. But you know what that means? Teenagers? Millennials? Adults? You know what it means? You have to model it for them. You gotta show them how to love people. And if you're gonna love people the way Jesus loves people, that means you're gonna have to love people that don't do what you want them to do. You're gonna have to love people who are sinners. You're gonna have to love people that half the time they do stuff you ask them not to do. Because that's how Jesus loves us. Because we don't always do what he wants us to do. And we're not always lining up with what he wants, but Jesus loves us in the same way that I've loved you, you love other people. That's hard. So I need Jesus' power to do it, and I believe you do too. And so, as we wrap this up, if I get my page to come back here. We wrap this up. Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Jesus' power gives us hope. Jesus' power helps us to be bold. Jesus' power lets us live forever. And Jesus' power helps us be good friends. Now, just before the band comes, I'm going to invite them to come. And then Julie's going to come, and our kids are going to come help us in our last song. I just want to pause. If you are here or you're listening in and you have never settled this Jesus thing, you know, the whole heaven thing and, and all of that, today I just want to give you an opportunity. You don't have to tell me. I wish you would. I would love to celebrate you. But, but you need to tell God. Admit to God that you're a sinner, that you come up short and you make mistakes. And you need to believe that Jesus came and died and he actually rose again. That's the wrestling match. That, that's the whole faith thing that Jesus came and died and rose again, paying the penalty for your sin and mine too. And then to ask Jesus to save you. And so I just want to give you just a couple seconds to think that through, and then I'm going to pray. And then I'm going to invite Julie and the kids, and the band's going to lead us, and then we're going to wrap this up uh, with our open house and all of that stuff. So just think about your life. Maybe something that we talked about to be bold, to help you do hard things, or to be a good friend. Maybe you need to think about that. Let's pray. Father, thank you for how you love us. You love us when we come up short. You love us when we sin. God, forgive us for the times that we don't extend grace to people because they sin differently than we do. Help us to be kind and decent and loving. Help us to be bold. Help us to remember that Jesus really did rise from the dead. And there was incredible power that was required for that to happen. And if we follow you, your spirit that raised your son from the dead lives in us. And we can climb on top of whatever circumstance. We have everything we need if God's spirit lives in our lives. We have everything we need for the hard things. We have everything we need for hope. We have everything we need to be bold. We have everything we need to be good friends to people. And I am praying, Father, if there's anybody listening in, and they have never put their faith in your son, Jesus, that today would be the day. That they would admit to you that they're a sinner, they come up short. They would admit to you that they believe that Jesus came and died, and he rose from the grave. 
And then right now, as I'm praying, that they would just call out to Jesus and say, Jesus, I've messed it up, and I believe you paid for that. And I'm asking you to become my Lord and Savior. Take me to heaven one day. And God, I'm counting on you to help me do those hard things and to be bold and have hope. That I can be decent with people. And God, I am asking lastly, before Julie and the kids come up and we party this thing out, I pray you help us to be decent with other people. That we're decent with people at CCW. We're decent with people around our house. We're decent with our families. We're decent with our coworkers. We need to point people to you. This world desperately needs Jesus. And so help us to find a way to do that. Help us to be innovative as we live in this time of this virus. May we not be quiet. May we not withhold love or grace or the message of Jesus. Help us in all of those things. We cannot thank you enough for what you have done for us. Thank you for the power that you have. Thank you for the power that you share. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Are you grateful that God's in your life? Let yes. me hear you. Yes. I, so I don't think you are. Let, let me just hear. Are you grateful that God's in your life? Yes. All right. Then stand on up. Kids, come on up. Julie, come on up. We are going to party this thing out. And, and so let's go. Let's party. Oh! 
Let's give them one more round of applause. Thank you to our helpers, too. Um, at 11 o'clock, we are going to invite you to come in and check out CCW Kids. Not all of our rooms are complete yet, but kids, it's your job, if it's your room, to show them around. Don't forget, we also have a backdrop right inside if you would like for your selfie that we're going to post on Facebook, and then we will get the likes there. And I have a big stack of Say Yes sheets for those of you ready to start serving our children. There are lots of different serving opportunities. If you just want to get your feet wet, you can serve as a substitute, possibly once a month, or you can step in and serve once a month. So we invite you to enjoy your lunch. I know there's still lots of popsicles up there. Give us 15 minutes to tear down and then come inside and check us out. Thanks. Good job. Good job, man.